Okay, um, I'll start. I see we are not so many, but uh, thanks for the people that join this uh, webinar. Uh, let's say good morning and good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, thanks for joining this webinar. My name is Giorgio Fontana. I'm the technical manager refrigeration of the Southeast Asia region. My study background is basically on electronics applied to refrigeration and air conditioning systems. So I've been in this industry, they say over for over 30 years. So without further ado, let's, let's start. Um, as you know, Karel is a almost a 50 years old company. So be always on the front line to innovate. So leading to the evolution of uh, control technology and humidification for the air condition and the refrigeration. So we try to support the market with innovation. The company is investing quite a, a lot of money early in the research and development on new solution for energy and efficient uh, applications. As we know, uh, every year we are challenged to offer more energy saving solutions. Let's say more green that will be applied to the different parts of the world. Today, our focus is basically on the natural refrigerant. We know that for this, um, uh, the planet Earth is warming up too fast. So now with the also government trying to embrace with the Kigali uh, treaty. So we need to come up with solution that are able to reduce this uh, global warming. And one of the thing we are looking at is uh, the natural refrigerant. CO2 is one of the more common available uh, natural refrigerant produced by is a byproduct produced by the exhaust of the industrial uh, activities. So as you can see here, companies, as I said, is almost over 50 years and uh, we, we, we always started leading. Uh, we were the lead, we are the leader on the control for the air conditioning, PLC devices. And then we moved towards the last few years technology for the um, CO2 application for the refrigeration system, as well as a, a residential like heat pump. Basically, just to people that don't know Carell, we are a global company. We have a uh, different production facilities scattered around the world. The two major ones are in, uh, uh, say three, they are in Italy, uh, of course, China, and one also nearby Italy, it's countries called Croatia. Company, we, we have a full range for application, for the retail application, full range of controls. And uh, we are high qualified and trained uh, technicians, engineers, that uh, they know the complexity uh, of this solution overall for improving the energy efficiency. We developed along these few years, uh, DC technology for DC application. So brushless uh, compressor, as well as uh, the famous uh, ejectors. Ejectors is a solution to, let's say exploit in some situation we can uh, uh, withdraw gas refrigerant from the evaporators without the use of compressors. So making the compressor working less. And we see that this type of technology is, uh, is efficient also in a warmer climate. I have to say, basically in the region, we don't have uh, yet many application running on transcritical. We are most application that are in, uh, let's say, subcritical. So it would be cascade or pump systems. But I can see, uh, and I may mention a little bit later, I can see that 
we are, is, is getting traction and uh, some application and transcritical that they've been installed also in uh, in this region which is very hot i will speak a little bit later okay you can find more information about natural refrigerants uh, in our website you will see uh, we call it white papers a few information quite interesting documents that teach about natural refrigerants application etc etc I really suggest, uh, recommend really uh, you to download and to visit our website. This is a link for Insta here below. Basically, in the last few years, last less than, let's say, eight, seven years, maybe less, we, the growth of uh, CO2 applications, CO2 installations has been exponential. Uh, so we don't have data for 2019. We know 2020 was not a very good year for the obvious reasons, but we know out there in the market, we got more than, let's say, 6,000 installation with our technology. Uh, so it's, it's quite important and it's quite rewarding as well. In Japan, uh, since last year, we got, let's say, more than 250 units with our CO2 transcritical application. We know we we be working in partnership with Panasonic Appliances for uh, CO2 transcritical rack. And uh, there's been also a recent, back last year, end of last year, uh, an installation in one of big uh, cold rooms in Osaka. Thank you for uh, fish stocking and uh, and um, processing using our technology, which is uh, uh, our controller that you can see here. It's called a Pirac CO2 transcritical and uh, implementing some, uh, let's say, eco functions like the parallel compressing and the modulation of the, the high pressure valve, which is the valve on the outlet of the gas cooler. You can, uh, if you have any questions, you can, uh, let's say, write the question in the chat on the QA, and then uh, uh, my colleague will read it to me and I'll try to answer at the end of this presentation. You see another application we done also with the, uh, involvement of the manufacturer of the racks and the contractors. It was our, one of the first, and the first actually, CO2 transcritical in China on a metro store in Beijing. This store is, uh, is, uh, is quite uh, big with all the, more than 110 uh, assets. So let's say over 80, 80 something cabinets and, uh, and other, 50, 40, 30, less than 30 cold rooms uh, with two racks. One rack is the rack A. We see this is for medium low temperature, it's a booster rack with a parallel compressor. And, uh, and another one uh, is just for the high temperature, so the medium temperature, let's say, um, cabinets with a parallel compressor. Again, uh, I don't want to go and tell you in details. You can find also case studies in uh, our website and I'll leave you the link. I will share this the presentation. You can download this uh, case study. It was a store done uh, around three, four years ago and uh, it's been running uh, uh, very well since then. Basically, the control, as I said, is the Pirac 300 transcritical with our HP valve for the flash gas as well. And uh, our BOSS system that is collect all the data and then uh, with some, uh, of course, uh, network into the system, our cabinet will be with our controllers. The cabinet will be running with our controllers, the expansion valve as well. And we try to improve the efficiency using, we call it smooth line. In a sense, we don't really close the valve 
I say the expansion valve when it gets to the set point, but it is still uh, working and floating, let's say instead the, the superheat, as well as we float the suction. So maybe during the night in some situation, uh, we can float the suction. The system it reads all the duty cycle, the cabinets, you understand that they are satisfied. So the boss, the central system, he, he send information to the rack to increase his suction send point within limits. Of course, there are some protection, something goes on, some uh, utilities, uh, let's say go offline or some alarms, the system revert back to the safety, secure safety conditions running at a set uh, suction send point. Now, well, as I said, uh, uh, initially at the beginning, we don't have many installation here in Southeast Asia. As I said, we have more uh, sub, uh, let's say subcritical. But I see uh, the interest of the user to really also governments now pushing for more green technology. We see the opportunity also in this region to really help and work with the OEMs, contractor to introduce our technology. So a brief overview of our technology. So behind the scene. Basically, as I said, Carell is been investing and keep investing a lot of money uh, in the research and development of technology for, uh, let's say, hydrocarbons. So we know the limitation on charge. So we can see solution for bottle coolers, small cabinets, and we go also solution for a medium, medium, the best medium size supermarket in a, in a water chile solution, or we call it a water loop, where is each cabinet has got its own condensing unit running with a DC compressor. It's got major benefits. Uh, we highlighted at the end of this presentation, a few benefits on this. Then we have a solution for condensing units for CO2, as well as for some uh, rack, digital rack, with a four uh, compressor for the medium temperature and two compressor for the low temperature side. And of course, uh, for the big centralized system, and we call, as I say, PRAC with the uh, ejector. The DC inverted technology is one of the efficient type of um, technology. They allow increasing the efficiency overall in part load. Most of the time, the cabinets work in part loads. So technology like a fixed speed on and off is not so efficient, it would be efficient when they always are running at 100%, because of course, and the seeing that has got a consumption, so it would be less efficient. But most of the time, uh, I say 40% uh, of the, 50% of the time, uh, the unit will be running like, a, you know, it will be a 40%, uh, Sorry, a 40% time will be the unit will be like a 50 50% partial load. So, with a DC technology, we can improve a lot of the efficiency overall when the speed is, is can variable between 15 up to 100%. So, it's, the modulation is quite wide, very wide. I, I, I gather you will know what is what does it mean DC, what does it mean permanent magnet, basically. Is more, is more efficient than an AC, a synchronous motor, uh, because there is no energy or the say work to do to bring, uh, energize the rotor. The rotor has got a magnet and it's already embedded in this, uh, in, the, in the motor. So allows you to uh, save energy and allows you also to improve the, the range of uh, flow control. We developed the inverter to manage 
this type of compressor suitable for quite a very wide range of compressor scroll rotary type of uh, compressor uh, this is our inverter. There are different sizes, of course. And uh, it is an inverter. Also, we can offer the class B protection, means that the inverter is itself, it can be considered as a safety device as well. Because you know, all the con control basically come with class A. Class A means they're not, must not be considered as safety device. So we can avoid to install some like a circuit breaker, um, some overload circuit breaker, something like that. We can save on the installation and save on the cap, capex of the unit. So as a Carel, one of the first units is say the condensed unit. So we can have a solution for CO2 refrigerant uh, with a DC technology. We call it HICO. Again, this is using scroll type of compressor or rotary compressor, which this solution can be integrated, of course, into the local monitoring system and can be integrated into our cloud, which we call it RED. At the moment, uh, most of the units out there for the condensed unit, we work is mainly on the current steel HFC. Uh, moving towards the 448, 449, but that is what we have also in Europe. Mostly in Europe, we have a CO2 application nowadays with major OEMs. Basically, briefly, this is the circuit schematic, mechanical schematic. We will have obviously will evaporator with our own expansion valve. We can control maximum to five coolers and it will be connected through a serial line to the main controller managing the condensed units. It would manage a one compressor and uh, the electron expansion valve for the gas for the H, uh, after the gas coolers for the high pressure valve and the one uh, to control the pressure inside the receiver. So uh, to dump the, the gas into the main line, suction line, the compressor. Similarly, for the low temp application, in this case, we need to have two compressor. The second compressor is uh, basically a parallel compressor. So uh, controlling the pressure inside the receiver. This is a, let's say, not so recent, but in the last couple of years, maybe three, we developed an application, we developed a solutions to manage multi uh, digital compressors for uh, where we can go up to 35 kilowatts for the medium temperature and up to 10 kilowatts for the low temperature. This is an advanced solution where we can manage, as I said, four compressor for the medium temperature and uh, two compressor for the low temperature. As you understand, the permanent magnet compressor, they're very silent. So it's one also the benefit is also the noise. Overall, when you have this, uh, let's say, I call it convenience stores, Store in urban, urban areas, noise is, is fundamental to have a low noise. Uh, they say it's perfect for retrofit. We have a solution which is going to do the patented solution that is going to be patented is uh, for the oil management. And uh, it's got a very low footprint. Basically, you'll see here. Uh, this application control MT. So is a, is a booster, is a sort of booster application. It is a booster application. And uh, we manage this application with our PIRAC 300 and other controller that control the uh, inverters. 
there is a solution here to control the oil of the compressor with a specific valve. We look at the temperature at the inlet and outlet. When the temperature are similar, there is no need of oil. When this temperature, the inlet is higher, so it's expanding, there is a, a lack of oil. So the system will try to bring back the oil to the compressor. Most of the people out there and engineers are familiar with the, for larger racks with these uh, cycles, so booster cycles. These are three, sorry, three valves types. So you have the HPV and then you have the valve for controlling the pressure on the liquid receiver and the valves, let's say, for the expansion in the medium and low temperature. This is uh, the baseline system. Basically, there's been there out there for many years. And of course, the climate has to be, you know, for the right climate, not warm, hot. Then to improve efficiency, so to have less gas, let's say, managed by the medium temperature, rather to dumping into the suction of the medium temperature, is more efficient to have a, they call it parallel, some other call it intermediate compressor that can manage and take away the, to control the pressure inside the receiver. Then one of the latest technologies is the ejector. Ejector is not a new technology. It's, it's been there in the market using auto, automotive for years. Um, by exploit, let's say the Venturi effect and the Bernoulli principle that with a high motive, high pressure, high motive uh, here, uh, gas, um, you'll create a, 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 a depression here, which is will be lower than the pressure here. So you have the gas not anymore managed by the compressor, but will be going through these uh, ejectors. And you understand it will be less gas, the refrigerant managed by the compressor. So there will be definitely uh, lower, uh, work for the compressor and uh, this technology it, it also lifts the pressure on the evaporation side so there will be the, the compression rate will be lower so there will be energy saving quite important then I'll show you a slide a slide later on so this is asked to give an overview of the components uh, I don't want to go into detail we don't have time on this uh, webinar to go into details on the uh, functions could be quite complex, but is a, is a system that provide a very high reliability and sustainability, and it could be scalable as well because we can cover up quite large uh, rack, can have up to three ejector combination of three ejectors. Basically, as I said before, we can have a range in quite, and then the type of ejector, we can go up to three. The principle, you know, that you can see a picture here. This is uh, the inlet from the gas cooler, it will be a high pressure gas. It was, then it will come a very high speed here through the small nozzle. Yeah. And then here we do have a lower pressure, so it will be like here. And there will be an uh, a depression or outlet of the receiver. So it modulates based on the conditions. And uh, we know it can be used this technology for warmer climates. Not seen yet here in, in the regions, also because uh, there is a bit of a lack of uh, understanding and also skills to service and maintain this type of units. Basically, the saving will be more 
on the as I say, you can run it with a high evaporator, so it will be a lift, and the compression ratio will be a bit much lower. Okay. Also, the density, there will be a higher density. So there will be like, uh, there will be for the same mass flow, you need less displacement to maintain and achieve the cooling capacity. I didn't talk about CO2 in general, but it's, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a very good refrigerant. It's a low viscosity, uh, high density, high heat rejections. One limitation we know is the transcritical point, which is lower, lower at ambient in a hot climate. Basically, this is what the benefit can bring and uh, with an MJ modulating ejector. We can have some gain compared to a baseline. Baseline is like, as I said, a booster system with a, let's say with a flash gas valve and the high pressure valve. Compared to that, we can have some saving. We can, this is a, is a mathematical model. We, we, we base on some assumptions. Uh, running at um, uh, running with the um, pressure around the uh, suction press around the 28 29 bar uh, and uh, we can we can uh, of course optimize and in, in, in bring even further further uh, savings now here in um, so you'll see that there are advantages using the ejector, of course, and it's also you can see from the schematic, from mechanical side. In, uh, but it could be quite a complex, and as I said, it's under a lot of understanding and skills. There is another uh, solution, another cycle, which I didn't mention, I mentioned here briefly, is called the full transcritical efficiency cycle. Is basically using one of the major contractor uh, in a manufacturer, uh, global manufacturer. This is a technology is is simpler, but you use uh, uh, another in the middle here, another receiver, so you can flood, let's say, the medium temperature cabinet. So you control when when is it, it floods always the the medium temperature cabinet. When is this uh, is got to a certain level? It can also be used to feed and to expand through the uh, low temperature evaporator. Don't want to go in detail. This is one site that is running with this technology. And of course, with some optimization, with some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, option to say further, like a mechanical cooling, uh, subcooling. And uh, it can be also in further improved with other technology. Anyway, this has been running, has been running since last year, end of last year in Singapore. So this is another technology using our controller, our driver, and our valves. To close, because now we already are at 30 minutes, to close, uh, you will see we have other solution for uh, plug-in systems. This is a solution at the moment we have also here in the region running with a standard HVAC refrigerant, uh, 448 uh, or 404. But also we have uh, in Europe, we are working on solution for CO2. So that is, a, we call it water loop system. So it's like uh, uh, your condensed unit with a rotary type of compressor, uh, brushless compressor, with our control solution uh, with water loop. So, this is an example. So you have your water loop. So you, you, you exchange the condenser temperature through a different liquid, which in this case is no air, is water. And the major benefit of this technology, of course, is the manufacturer itself make the cabinets, make the condensed unit. It tests, pressure tests the unit. So it's, uh, it's uh, a sort of plug and play. And there's more uh, on the hydraulic side, you know, plumbing, just to run the piping around for the water. In this case, 
of course, this technology is applied as Virani also, and as I say, we have also a story in Singapore, no in CO2 standard uh, HFC refrigerants, but this is the concept is the same. So, sorry if I rush through this last uh, um, uh, slide. If you have any question, please. Otherwise, as I was suggested at the beginning, uh, you can also log in on uh, our website. And also there is uh, this link that it, we talk a lot about natural refrigerants. Thank you for listening.